from our sales transaction table, we want a single cell formula that when I enter it, it delivers the report in a single cell with a unique list of date and product and the sum of sales. Now back in Excel Magic Trick 1671, we saw how to do this type of report, and we had one, two, three different formulas. But in the comments below, Excel Wizard posted the formula we're going to see. Now the formula we're going to create here only works in Microsoft 365. If you're in earlier versions, what we're going to do was not possible. And of course, in those old days, we used pivot tables. But the beauty of a single cell formula, of course, is that it instantly updates when anything changes. Now, the first function we're going to use is the unique function. I want to highlight from this Excel table the date column and the product column. Close parentheses because there's two columns. This will give me a unique combination of all the dates and products. Now, when I hit Enter, we can see the formula doesn't live in any of the other cells, just the top cell. Also, we want to format this column as a date. Now we want to sort this. So in the very top cell, F2, we use another spilled array function, sort. And we're going to use comma, the second argument, sort index. I want to sort by the first, then the second column. I put that inside of array syntax, close parentheses. And now when I enter, the column is sorted first by date, and then within date, product. Now, we're going to have to use that result a few times in our formula. So one of the amazing functions that just does not exist in any other version except for Microsoft 365 is the let function. It allows us to define a variable. We're going to call it u. That's the name, comma. There's the variable. And then comma at the end. That's where our single cell formula is going to go. Now what we need to do is I need to pull the date and the product and then add a sales column. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the choose function. Choose is a great function that allows us to have an index number. And for us, we're going to need three columns, so 1, 2, 3. And choose can take single columns and join them together. From three individual columns, it can join them together to create a single three-column table. Now, the first value, we actually want just the date column. And since the variable is defining two columns, the way I would do it is I would use the index function. There's the variable. Remember, that's two columns. I want all of the rows, comma, but only the first column. Now, this is the way I would define that first column and then use choose to join it to the other two columns. But Excel wizard said, forget that. You just put u. Now, the thing is, that's two columns, comma. When I put u a second time inside of the argument for choose, because choose can only mash together single columns, it can't take what looks like 1, 2, and then 1, 2 again to create four columns. It can only do one column at a time. So in essence, the second one is sort of a placeholder. And we could prove this to ourselves if we just join those two things and enter. We can see we get just what we want. Now, the interesting thing is, and I'm not quite sure why this is working. Of course, if we were to define choose in a silly way, just with one of the U's, it gives us the exact same thing, Control-Z. The only thing I can think of is that choose just flat out can only deal with one column at a time. So that's how Excel Wizard said we should do it, because certainly listing those two variables instead of using index twice is much easier. Now the third column of values we create with the SUMIFS function. We're going to try and add from the sales column, comma. Criteria range 1, we're going to put the whole date column comma, and now I need all of these dates from the first column as the condition or criteria to tell some ifs to get the right total for each row. So this is where we have to use index on the U to look up just the first column, comma. We want all the rows, but we want the first column, close parentheses. Now watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy that because we're going to use it again. 
comma, the criteria range 2, well, we need to look through the product, comma, control V. And here we want to look up the second column. And now we come to the end, and that is our formula. If we close off some ifs, close off choose, and then close off let. So inside this third argument, we better comma 3. So we're telling choose to simultaneously get all three of those columns. And when I hit Enter, that is amazing. Now, one thing about dynamic arrays we're always going to have to contend with, at least as they've programmed them now, everything's grayed out and it may grow or shrink. So we need to add conditional formatting and ask the question, hey, when the cell is not empty, please add some formatting. Home ribbon tab, conditional formatting, new rule, or Alt-H-L-N. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. We can use our mouse or page down. We can use our mouse to jump to format values where this formula is true, or we can hit Tab. And we want a relative cell reference, so we click once, and then the F4 key one, two, three times. And we ask the question, are you not equal to a zero length text string? That's our syntax for empty cell that we're going to use. And then you can add whatever formatting you want. Add some fill and border, click OK. And in this column, we'll do currency. And now when I come over and copy and add some new records down below, that is amazing. We have, thanks to Excel Wizard, a single cell formula to do our reporting. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to learn more about LET or dynamic arrays, check out these videos.